this yeah. is what I think we got to think about. Now, Atlanta's not a big run team, right? And so we got to think about what our defense is going to do against that offense. They're not a big run team. Mike Davis is obviously – I mean, I think he's a low – he's, he's enough for them to do play action. That's that, that, You know? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't believe that the offensive line is going to, you know, be one of those things where it's saying, hey, we're worried about the run game. Yeah. Right? yeah. We're worried about Matt Ryan. And so, to me, that means now our defensive line can pin their ears back. And if Jonathan Gannon just blitzes from time to time, hmm. I, I think we're going to have a chance. I, I think we can cover well enough on the back end at this point this season that we got a chance of putting much more pressure on the quarterback than we did in the Yeah, it's interesting because we don't even know, like, does he like the blitz? Like, what? It, we, we don't really know his M.O. at this point. I, I, I was at the, the Eagles Autism Challenge, and so I was talking to a couple of the defensive guys, and I was like, what, what does he like to do? And, and they were like, you know, he hasn't rolled out very much right now, and we'll see. <laughs> so wow. they gave me zero insight, but I, I think he will blitz a little bit. You can't play. You can't play in the NFL and be successful without blitzing, can you? Well, here's the thing. The Atlanta Falcons are weak in the middle. The center's inexperienced. The left guard's yep. inexperienced. You know, it's Fletcher Coxville, right? So I'm, I'm thinking they're going to have to have help, and um, that, that I think Sweat could really uh, make an impact early in this game. Both of the guys coming off the edge can, can make an impact, and, and, and this is about making Matt Ryan uncomfortable, and you have to do that for four quarters. We, I, I think Matt Ryan is a decent enough quarterback at this age to continue to win football games if you let him be comfortable in the pocket. And, and so we got to make him uncomfortable. That means Fletcher Cox, who usually will have a good game, especially early on in the season against younger players, to get pushed right in his face. Now, you get some push in the quarterback's face, that's the place where they hate mm -hmm. it the most yeah. because they can't step up in the pocket. Yep. You get that type of push. Now, that, that changes the course of our defensive game plan. Maybe, maybe Jonathan Gannon doesn't have to blitz if our defensive line is doing their job. Play it by ear. Yeah. You know? You got to do it. See how the game goes. Right. Think on your feet. Something the head coach didn't do last year. Well, I, I, I think, you know, Nick Sirianni gives me, when he gives off the impression that he's much sharper than Doug Peterson. I mean, a, a sharper football mind. Like, he's always he, – he reminds me of these young Kyle Shanahan type of quarterbacks, and, uh, you know, the, the, the coach out there in Green Bay, that, that, that they are always thinking. It's like the next play mm -hmm. ahead. They're yeah. two, three plays ahead where Doug Peterson was much more re re reactionary. I, I think I, – I have no problem thinking that uh, Nick Sirianni is going to be a good type of coach where he's saying, okay, I'm going to think on my feet. And, you know, Mike, we, we all kind of made fun of those first cut of couple interviews where he was obviously nervous, was obviously kind of talking crazy <laughs> in some of the things he was saying. Yeah. But I've listened to him recently, and he sounds like a, a well-schooled head coach. You know, I, I agree. I, I actually agree. I, I, something changed. Like he's he, he gained maturity in the, in the last couple of months or something. You, you know what changed, Mike? The first couple of weeks, and obviously you're a brand-new head coach, you're talking about the possibility and all the things you want to do. And then he got into coaching and actually doing the things that he loves that he knows very well. And once he starts talking about football, you can tell that he's an X's and O's type of guy. He knows the game. There's no doubt about that. He understands and knows the game. And now these conversations that th during these interviews are about game plan and, and what are you going to yeah. do, how do you attack that. And that's what he knows very well. He can talk that type of talk. Where I think there were times where Doug Peterson, he got in these interviews and he was just winging it. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily go over very well with mm -hmm. us here in Philadelphia.